ill mind of Hobson eight. I love Hobson's topics, yo. I don't think I've heard much to even know what he really talks about. I've only heard like four or five tracks and every track it's like the the topics are very like very like current events like, I guess I would say. Like he talks about real topics that are happening in the world. Um Ill Mind of Hobson Five was crazy to me. Mm. Like I got to do a reaction to that. It was crazy. I heard that song once, but it was crazy. All right, Ill Mind of Hobson Eight sub request. All rise. Case number twenty three, Hobson versus Mister Funk Volume. The Honorable Dunsky Douglas presiding. All right, everybody, sit down. This is really getting on my nerves. You guys are taking up too much of my time. Marcus Hobson, please come to the stand. Nigga, what the fuck? What the fuck? Homie, I made you rich. Paid your rent. Damn right. Biting the hand that was feeding you, this shit don't make any sense. Nigga, what the fuck? What the fuck? You know this is that real shit. How you gonna forget who built this? Huh? I'm the one who made the company all the millions. Now you got problems to deal with. Man, this is tough luck. See, a couple weeks ago it was buzz. And that crew that was killing shit was us. Till you turned on me, homie, that's fucked up. I ain't keeping this shit on the hush, hush. On my chest, I just carry too much stuff. I done had it, enough is enough, bro. Plus, I needed something to get my... My buzz up. You don't fuck with the wrong dude. Ain't no telling what Hobson is gon' do. Creeping up on you. Quit your sleeping, I told you. This a motherfucking journey we finna go through. If I ain't had so much to lose, I swear to God, I'll probably beat up and choke you. Damn. Nigga, this is that raw shit. Right. That organic flow. You probably see up in Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Shit, Remy Timbers. Something. Yo, I love how he's like on the witness stand. That means he's not telling a lie. That means everything that he's talking about is truth. Yeah. And I love how like the jury is just bopping to it. It is that raw shit, right. that organic flow you probably see up in Whole Foods. Woo. Shit, Remy Timbers, something's fishy about you, Mr. D. Ritter. When I told you that I wanted new management, why the fuck you throw a fit and seem bitter? Why you catch an attitude whenever I question you about all my fucking percentages? I know why. Why? You've been bending it in your benefit. You're on or I'm menacing. This nigga crazy. I'm telling all of my people. You tell him. He taking all of my C notes. <laughs> see, he has a gambling issue. We taste the cash and blows it all like casinos. Damn. Uh -oh. When I bring up my royalties, you start avoiding me. That's some disloyalty. You woke up the evil boy in me. Your ass is poisoning. Tell me why you would destroy me. This was a fucking vision that I had created with your brother. But you too infatuated with the money. You killed it and ran it straight into the gut. Now I think, why'd I make the A and me the boss? You keep pissing a whole lot of people off. Our whole label came out with a weak result. You on that same bullshit to make a bro. Nigga, I don't know what you thought. You think I can't see the blood of the walls? I'm the one who ain't going down, nigga. I don't know what you thought. I can clearly see the blood on the wall. Blood on the wall. I ain't going down, nigga. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be holy. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be holy. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be holy. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Hold up, hold up. I got some more shit to say. Yeah. It's supposed to be pro volume, isn't it? Thought it was music above all the business But you just said fuck all you niggas You turn this to brand and you started the front volume fitness? Come on, I really think Got us portraying something we really ain't How we supposed to be ill when you on our website with a shake weight Trying to be Billy Blank? Nigga, thanks Four, ain't nobody trying to lift weights We just want to hit up the studio when it's rap and do shows But you don't understand the culture of hip-hop You a lame-ass nigga, damn half the crew knows New ways, Jerry Heller, a scary fella I hate your fucking name, every letter I'm very fed up You acting like an ordinary heifer I'ma take you to the mortuary, dress up we gave you our trust, then you had us cornered. You got us a shitty label deal with Warner. And if I confront you about it, you tell me I need counseling and I got a disorder. You send me your joy in this horror. Shitty hotels, no sleep, with no food to order. Meet and grease every single day is torture. How you expecting the A1 performer? Every time something's wrong, it's the same thing. What? Blah, 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 you just blame me. Damn. Then you tell Brooklyn and Jamie. Damn. Now they both thinking I'm crazy. Damn. I deal with this on the daily. Damn. My career mentally rapes me. Damn. I won't let this nigga break me. He praying dizzy, right? His go replace me. Shady. What are your fucking motives, Dame? Let's talk about it. 
Mmm, you're our manager, our label owner, our accountant. Hmm, that's kind of tricky. Something is fishy. That's risky. We just don't even know. We go with the flow while you row in the boat. You keeping it simple minded, cause you know when our only concern is just hoping we blow. So when all the money come in from our album and tours, you sit there and soak in the dough. When did we ever ask about the gross? When did we ever ask about the net? You would just hand us money from our shows, cause you knew we wasn't questioning the checks. Nigga, I trusted you with my life. You up your percentage, so I'm making less. Fuck you, bitch. You get no respect. This is what hoppers coming for your neck. Bless. All you care about is making money. You don't care about a fucking soul, though. You just fluctuate our dollars up and down at your convenience like a fucking pogo. You been screwing everybody on the label on the low, and they don't even know, though. So good luck, Jaren, Dizzy, Hopper, Swizz. I'm going solo. Nigga, I don't know what you thought. You think I can't see the blood on the walls? That ain't going down, nigga. I don't know what you thought. I can clearly see the blood on the wall. Got it going down, nigga. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be on it. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be on it. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be on it. Ain't got time for your bullshit. Everybody knows you be on it. Change is one of the most difficult things that we face, but change is inevitable. One reason we don't like change is we get comfortable where we are. We get used to our friends, our job, the place we live. And even if it's not perfect, we accept it because it's familiar. And what happens is because we're not willing to change, we get stuck in what God used to do instead of moving forward into what God is about to do. And just because God's blessed you where you are doesn't mean you can just sit back and settle there. You have to stay open to what God is doing now. What worked five years ago may not work today. If you're going to be successful, you have to be willing to change. Every blessing is not supposed to be permanent. Every provision is not supposed to last forever. We should constantly evaluate our friendships. Who's speaking into your life? Who are you depending on? Make sure they're not dragging you down limiting you from blossoming everybody is not supposed to be in our life forever if you don't get rid of the wrong friends you will never meet the right friends yo i love every bit of that especially like in the end it just tied everything together yeah like this whole topic about one like his experience i'm guessing his personal experience with a label and like getting fucked over basically getting like milked for it and then him breaking out of it is such a great story to hear yeah especially for someone that's very talented yeah it's hard it's fucked up like with managers and record labels how like you hear a lot of stories about how they fuck over artists Mm -hmm. you know and like when you sign that contract like i don't know what the details are of the contracts but like they get a lot they get um you know your royalties and shit like that and mm-hmm. then you go on tours and like that whole shit with like six nine where i was, was thinking that he was going on tour and i forgot what the numbers were so I'm, i could be wrong but like i think um a show he was getting like one i think 150 or 180 and out of that he was getting like 50k <laughs> like he was getting raped yes. and he never questioned it right because you don't really see what's what you're pulling right and then like when he went out on his own and he did a tour and they were paying him like the full amount he's like holy shit like 150 180 i was getting 50 you know like but he wasn't aware like i heard down in an interview when he did an inter- interview with fucking um shade room i think it was with the shade room if i remember right um so yeah you just hear that shit a lot especially with the tours and shit like that like they're managing all these events they're taking in the money and like and, like, you just don't know what's what unless you ask to see, like, what's going on. Especially if you trust the person, you're just like, fuck it. And how it seems like they were really close. Yeah. And then toward the end, it's it says, like, oh, like, you should reevaluate your friends. Are they trying to blossom you or yeah. whatever? It's, it's, it's real. Like, people change. Not everyone's supposed to be in your life. And I love that he put that part toward the end. A lot of people should hear that. Yeah. Because they could relate. Especially when it comes to money. A lot of people are very greedy. Mm-hmm. They're blindsided by it. Yeah. It changes relationships. Let's like it.
That's like it. And we out. Meow.